Hey y'all, this is Billy at Permapastures Farm. Today's gonna be something we've never done before in terms of a video, but before I get into that, let me kind of tell you a brief story of what brought us here. Okay, I was listening to a podcast, the Ted and Austin Brower Show, which I listen to pretty much every day. And Dr. Ted was saying in this video that you should turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Now, for the longest time, we just kind of leave it on like most people do. Well, I wasn't sleeping very well, and I said, you know what, I don't know if I'm buying it, but let me go ahead and give it a shot. Well, I did, and I slept a little bit better. And then I took my cell phone, took it out of the room, put it in another part of the house, and also turned off the Wi-Fi. And since that time, I've noticed that I have slept considerably better, much, much better, to the point now where I never really fully ever get eight hours but I sometimes do when I turn the Wi-Fi off. Okay, now after that, I was listening to Caravan to Midnight. It's another podcast I listen to with John B. Wells. And typically when John B. has somebody on that show, I pay attention. Now, a little while back, he had a gentleman on there, a, um, a genius. He's done so many wonderful things by, Nor by the name of Norbert Hewson. And he invented a number of devices that help mitigate radiation, whether it's your cell phone, whether it's your Wi-Fi, whole house protection. But then during this show, he was talking about how all of these, these types of radiation and things like it affect the bees. Now, I've heard a number of reasons as to why the bees are being affected, whether it's neonicotinoid um, products that are used on crops, that was some of the reasons that people explained. But the one that I heard from him honestly kind of rang to me because I could relate to it. And he talked in great detail about the, le the electromagnetic things that are going on around us. Now, it wasn't long after that I listened to that program that we just happened. And we even discussed it right here on this channel. We had talked about how we'd go down to the bees. And whenever we were filming, it was tough to do because the bees would like mob the cell phone it never happened before, but all of a sudden, over the last several months, it had been happening. So it made us take pause and think about it for a minute. And then I went back and I listened to the interview that Mr. Hewson did with John B. Wells on Caravan of Midnight. And I was like, okay, there's got to be something here. Here it is. I'm sleeping better. I noticed the bees behave night and day different when my cell phone, when I'm down there in that truck and that cell phone is anywhere near those guys they start acting up. Or maybe they're not acting up. Maybe there's just something that I'm introducing into their environment that they don't like and they're reacting. So, and as I told before that I've been taking this cell phone, leaving it in the truck whenever I had to work around them. So anyway, long story short or long story less long, I reached out to Mr. Houston and I told him, I said, you know, I heard you on John B. I was wondering if I could test your device. Now folks, I've never, the only time you hear me or anybody else on this channel go on about anything that we have that we promote, I can promise you that we're actually testing it and nobody came to us and said, hey, will you advertise for us? No, just like I did with Miss Lippy's uh, seasoning, I reached out to her because it sounded, I tasted it and I thought it was great. I reached out to Mr. Houston because I heard his interview, everything he said there made sense to me. So I asked if we could test one of his devices. And folks, this is it. I think it's called the SD25 and it has a radius. You stick it within the proximity of your bees and it has a radius somewhere of, I think it's uh, 75, no, it's a radius of 75 feet. So a diameter of 150 feet. So this thing stretch out, stretches out quite a bit. There's not much space between our hives down there. So all I need to do essentially is put this thing protect it some sort of way from the elements, and at the same time, leave it within close proximity to the bees. Now, he makes high claims regarding this device and what it does. Now, it does essentially, as I understand it, the same thing his cell phone protection devices do, is that it helps to mitigate a lot of that electromagnetic radiation. Also, functions in a frequency that mites and a number of other things, whether it's pesticides or whether it's the all the little critters that are out there that want to harm your bees, it helps, it helps make a frequency that is advantageous to the bees and not so much for the, for the enemies of those bees. All right, Mr. Hewson realized that there was ancient knowledge 
regarding how these bees were situated and it worked to their advantage and there was a, a configuration initially a seven point configuration and then i think he had eventually established a 14 point configuration which by the way is supposedly replicated within this device now folks there's a number of other devices out there that we're testing and that we're in the process of looking at right now and so far regarding healing and pain mitigation and pain management which we can relate to right around here um it gave me pause and made me think that maybe this thing might actually work so he's given me liberty for six months to give this thing a shot and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to take it out there we're going to stick it in one of our empty hives we're going to stick it down in there well within the radius of where this thing should operate but before we do that we're going to inspect everything see where everything looks see if we got any beetle or mite issues and if we do how bad they are and then we'll stick this thing in there we'll check out our honey we'll see exactly we know where things were last year we know that we lost a few hives last year now we do have an advantage in that we are permaculture designers everybody on this property is so we do things that are already in keeping with things that we think are going to be beneficial to those bees to get into the specifics of what exactly the claims are of this thing i'm going to bring in a michelle i'm going to bring michelle over here and she's going to kind of go down some of the list of the claims that this thing is supposedly going to mitigate okay so what this device is supposed to do is create an environment so that ants beetles varroa mites um mice wasps can't live in that environment it's also supposed to neutralize fungicides herbicides insecticides pesticides things like that and neutralize genetically modified organisms like uh, GMO chemicals uh, glyphosate uh, triclosan um, things like that right so there are high claims on this thing but, you know, he gets a few points in my books giving us a chance to take it for a test drive for six months. And it isn't, it isn't cheap. I mean, nothing worth having ever is. So it's not cheap. But if it does what it's spouted to do, then we're going to give some really strong consideration in purchasing this. Now, if anybody wants to go out there and buy this thing, if you're having any of the problems we just described here, you can reach out to Mr. Usen. They'll be in the show notes. We'll leave a link there so you can find them. Also check out his YouTube channel because I'm doing a very small, he goes into much, much greater detail as to what the problems are and how they're mitigated with these devices. So um, I'm willing to go give it a shot and I'm excited to give it a shot. So we're gonna take this thing down the hill now, this has not been the best day in the world where there's a, there's a bee swarm we're after and we're having the hardest time catching it. So we're going to let that thing kind of settle down. And then we're going to go out here and knock out a few things at the same time. We're going to put this device into place and at the same time inspect the bees, possibly even add supers to them. Right. See what the population, see how bad the mites are, if there are any. Just so we get a gauge of what it's like before the device and then we're going to install the device and then after a time period we'll see well i'm hoping we lost some last year to moths right to, right right so we lost like three of them and they and we attributed a lot of that to our own inexperience and that we put together too much hive for too little bee and because of it we lost some but it could have been other things as well but will this thing help in terms of those things we're about to find out so with that said we're going to get off this porch get suited and booted go on down there to the hives and go put this thing in place okay this here is a spare box all we're going to do is take this now it does have to be sheltered from the elements but i can't think of a better place than one of these boxes and considering we're well within the radius no big deal we're going to put it right there and then we'll come back later and in fact we don't even need to come back later we'll take this just to make sure it doesn't fly away a little steel plate. So there we go. All right, so at first, last time we were here, William was getting mobbed on the phone. Son, do you see a difference? Well, no, but we haven't opened up any boxes yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. What are we looking for? Okay, so we're just wanting to see how full the honey supers are so we know if and when we've got enough, put another honey super on it. And for the ones that are just 
like single and double boxes, then we just want to see how full they are just to get a estimate of when we might have to add another box or another honey super. Okay, that one hive in the back there, one from Texas, they are the nastiest set of bees you've ever seen in your life. But they're also the most productive for some reason. So we're going to start with these nice guys here. All right, now that's a that's a wrap. But folks, I'm gonna tell you right off, the things we've noticed just right out of the gates, we've messed with these enough to know what a baseline is and what we have to deal with on a sunny day like today. Couldn't have picked a better time to work with these guys. Now, I'm gonna tell you, having been around these guys, these little flying snapping turtles for, for a little while now and watched them, it has never been a more pleasurable time of being around them. For some reason, Right off the bat, they were more docile. I can tell you that. And William said regarding the phone that we were filming from, that there was absolutely no problem. Last time, he couldn't even hardly film because the bees were attacking the phone as we were doing this. So is it working? I, I gotta be honest, right off the bat, I'm a little bit shocked. So where this goes, I don't know. He's given us 10 months, or I'm sorry, six months to test this thing. But folks, in case any of you out there are wanting to jump on this right now, we'll give you our honest report when the time comes. And we get no, there is no financial benefit for us for even doing this. I heard about this great man and I reached out to him and asked if, hey, if your project is legit, do you mind if we test it? And if it's legit, we're gonna tell everybody. If it isn't, we're gonna do the same. So, you know, it speaks well to him, obviously that he gave us the opportunity, didn't just make these lofty claims and say, run with it. But here in the here in the future, folks, we're gonna give you an update on that and let you know how it's going. But I gotta say, right out of the gates, the bees behave night and day differently than what they did the last time when we were there. I mean, we were getting completely chewed up, especially the small eight frame hive that we have on the end. Those are usually, the those are the ones we brought from Texas. They are the most productive, but they are also by far the most, it's the most deadly. I mean, it's like they're willing to lose half that hives going after you. So folks, we'll give you an update on it. If anybody's interested in getting this, we're going to leave the product information in the um, show notes, but just check out it, check him out, uh, Norbert Hewson. And you're going to have to check him out. Honestly, check out his YouTube channel. Also check out the interview that was recently done on Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells. And I think you're gonna to wanna to check this thing out. Like I said, it's not expensive, but if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, then we will ultimately pay for this. So folks, I hope this has helped. I hope this helps. Till next time, this is Billy the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.